Welcome to No Bunts, the podcast for the casual baseball fan here at the Athletic Baseball Show feed. I'm J.E. Skeets, still on the mound, three innings in, arms feeling good, and with me in studio, making the magic happen, super producer J.D. Hello. There he is, and my co-host, joining us from Taiwan. He always gets a kick out of the popcorns, peanuts, strawberry slushies. I call him Mr. October because he loves Halloween candy and scary movies. It's Joel McMillan. What's up, Joel? I am doing well, Skeets. Uh, it's good to be here. Talk <laughs> some playoff baseball. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, but you do love scary movies. Do you have a favorite Halloween spooky movie? Two come to mind. Friday the 13th, part four, final chapter, <laughs> and The Conjuring. Oh, okay. Okay. Those are legitimately, legitimately scared me <laughs> as an adult. Not going to lie. Turned on the lights. No shame in the game. <laughs> hey, me too, man. I don't even watch those things. I don't know how you do it. Uh, well, let's get into it, Joel. We got lots to uh, break down in the postseason, and we're going to start today's pod with a little fair or foul. I'm jumping right into it, Joel. Fair or foul, Bryce Harper is the face of modern day baseball. That's a fair ball, Skeets. That is a fair ball. Now, I know some people might disagree, and people, some people might automatically say, oh, it's Otani or it's possibly even Aaron Judge. But in my opinion, like right now, at this moment, it's Bryce Harper. And I think it's Bryce Harper for a couple of reasons. After he signed with the Phillies, this was in the 2019 offseason. I know it was a couple of years ago, but his jersey was the number one New Jersey launch. It had the highest sales within 24 hours uh, in any sport. And the Phillies ended up selling an extra 100,000 tickets when he announced his signing. So that just goes to show you kind of the impact that he's had. I think he's a guy that's very self-aware. He's very media savvy. He's obviously very talented. Like he's a good looking guy. He's charismatic. You're seeing a lot more of him on TV. Like as the playoffs, he's kind of must see TV. He's wearing, they're showing what clothes he's wearing. Mm -hmm. There was a photo of him the other day with a suit and on the liner, it had a bunch of places in Philadelphia. Um, I think year a couple years ago people saw him kind of as an entitled player he was on the cover of sports illustrated at 16 i believe the title of the article was the chosen one or the next one i can't be mistaken and i think that turned fans off and they're like well who's this guy like he hasn't he hasn't proved anything yet but i think he's converted a lot of those people he's converted a lot of those haters like i'm one of them and yeah i think he's absolutely the face of baseball right now He's got an amazing pedigree. The only thing that he's missing is a championship. And the way the Phillies are playing right now, I think he's well on his way to getting his first one. Don't want to jinx him. But I, yeah, I mean, I think he's he's the face of baseball right now. Skeets, I'm curious, like as a casual fan, what's your opinion? Yeah, I mean, all your reasons make sense. I hadn't realized uh, until doing a little research before jumping on here with you that, yeah, he got the LeBron treatment. You, you said it there. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, 16 years old, high school phenom. And it said, I just looked at it, the chosen one, baseball's chosen one. Uh, mm. That's a lot of pressure. Obviously, we saw what LeBron did with it. Turned out to be one of the greatest of all time. And Bryce Harper is trying to replicate that. Look, the guy's on fire right now. Uh, in game one versus the Diamondbacks, he crushed a 420-foot first inning home run. And then he blew out his finger candles, Joel, as he crossed That's home plate. I, I didn't know finger Happy candles birthday. were a thing. Yeah, it was his birthday. He also lined an RBI single in the third. He walked and scored in the fifth. He was getting the MVP chance, you know, sort of all night long and has been throughout the postseason. Um, he, right now, no doubt he is. But you brought up some other big – Otani for sure – is going to be, in theory, challenging that over the next couple of years. But look, a, a World Series here for Bryce Harper. I mean, that that that's one of the five, you know, one of those things you got to add to the resume, right? For sure, yeah. And I mean, Bryce Harper. I, this might sound weird, Skeets, but Bryce Harper almost is America to me. He's American <laughs> baseball. He's got the, yeah. you know, like a lot of the Phillies guys, they wear the American flag bandana or accessories. Yep. And he came out. He came out, I think, this week. The Olympics are coming to Los Angeles in 20, 
28 and he said like put me in i want to play that would put him i think at 36 or 37 that would be awesome i don't think harper's played at a world baseball classic which to me is crazy i can't believe he hasn't played at one or in one yeah but i mean yeah to me like right now he's the face like i know this always changes you know like as time goes on but it just kind of feel like he's he's the guy like he's the natural one to kind of take this role and i love watching him play and i love watching the phillies play but i mean if he gets this ring i think that's going to kind of cement him as as the face right now for sure yeah well moving on kyle schwarber he hit two of philadelphia's three solo homers off merrill kelly uh, and these Phillies, man, they just pounded the Diamondbacks 10-0 in Game 2 last night, Tuesday night. They have the 2-0 lead in the NL Championship Series. So Schwarber's two long balls were Philadelphia's 14th and 15th homers in the last four games as the Phillies just continue to mash their way through October. So fair or foul, Joel, the Phillies will never stop socking dingers. I want to say fair so bad skeets on this one because they're so I mean it's crazy what they're doing but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say foul but before I get to my reason I just want to kind of add a couple points to what you were saying too in the in the last four games the Phillies have hit three home runs off of the same pitcher and that hasn't been done since June 9th to June 13th the 1894 Chicago Colts did it. So <laughs> oh, there's wow. a little fun fact. They hit three home runs off AJ Smith Shaver, three home runs off Spencer Strider, three home runs off of Zach Gallen, and three home runs off of Merrill Kelly. And Strider and Gallen, I mean, man, they're going to get Cy Young votes. Those guys yeah. are some jabronis. <laughs> you know, those are some big names too. So now I'm going to say foul for this. Baseball is a cruel sport, and the law of averages usually happens at the worst time and teams can get white hot and they can just go ice cold just as quickly what the phillies are doing right now is crazy (laughs) i but i mean can they keep it up for another six wins that remains to be seen uh i don't know i think they're gonna take care of arizona but it'll be interesting to see like uh if they do get to the world series and i think they will if they can maintain this offensive production and even like the home runs Man, they're getting a ton of extra base hits. Doubles, Real Muto, yeah. Turner had doubles last night. I mean, it's a lot of extra base hits. They're just, I mean, they're just bludgeoning teams right there. So I, I'm going to say foul because the law of averages in baseball says it's not sustainable, but I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, right now, any at bat, when they are especially at home in that park with that crowd and everybody oh, yeah. standing, you know, 40,000 plus on their feet, it does sort of feel like they're going to hit a home run every time they're up there because the energy is just it like does. through the roof and they're coming mm-hmm. through all these guys. I mean, Schwarber, I said he hit two in game two there. He is now at 18 home runs in his career in the postseason. Uh, he had six wow. for Philly in last year's playoffs. So he is tied with Reggie Jackson and Mickey Mantle. Kyle Schwarber. Oh my gosh. Uh, only Wild. six other players have more MLB postseason home runs in their career. Like, that's where he is right now. And he's not the only one hitting all these dingers. They are on a heater. I would like to say, though, because it's getting overlooked because the story is, yeah, dinger after dinger after dinger. Last night, you know, Phillies pitcher Aaron Nola, he, he another gem, like another great game, yeah. three hit ball, struck out seven and in six innings. Through his three postseason starts, he has struck out 19 and his ERA is under one. It's .96. So this guy in every series, be it the wild card against Miami, uh, against the Braves, he struck out nine in that series. And then last night, Joel, like it's getting, it is getting overlooked a little bit how great the uh, the Philly pitchers have done in, in this postseason. Yeah, they're starting pitching, their bullpen, they've yeah. got the best bullpen ERA to this postseason and they're averaging almost six runs. They're averaging 5.8 runs per game. So when you're getting that offensive production combined with that bullpen and that starting pitching, man, it's hard to bet against the Phillies at this point. They they just look the part. Man, who skeets, who picked the Phillies to win the World Series? Do you know? Yeah, how much money did you actually put on it though? How many fin dogs did you put down? Ah, uh, no fin dogs. Oh. Zero fin dogs. Hey. I should have. 
I should have. Joel, you're right. A couple weeks ago, you were calling it before the postseason had even started. You're like, yeah, the Bur- I, I like the Phillies to, to pull this off. And they've got a long way to go still. they got to get there. Uh, you know, they got to put away the Diamondbacks. It feels like that's going to happen. And then they obviously have to play either the Rangers or the Astros. And it's looking like the Rangers, who are up 2-0 in their series. And that's our next fair or foul question. Fair or foul, Joel, the Texas Rangers are a World Series lock. You can put them in pen. They're going there up to on oh, on Houston. What do you think? I deliberated on this one, Skeets, uh, but I'm gonna go foul. Whoa! Um, wow. Okay. I'm gonna. I li- listen. I know they're up 2-0. Like that's huge. Listen, they have. I mean, as good as the Phillies have looked, Skeets, the Rangers have almost matched them. Not in terms of like offensive production, but man, they've knocked out. You know, they knocked out Baltimore and they knocked out Tampa Bay. And those were the two best teams in the American League. Yeah. Swept them both. They look fantastic. They've done it. Pretty much all their wins have come on the road as well. They've only played one home game in this playoff, which is crazy to believe. Um, Texas has been a very weird team the past two months. They looked great up until mid-August. And then they just kind of imploded. They had a massive losing streak, including being swept by the Astros in their own park. And then they kind of backed into the playoffs. So they kind of have had a weird six weeks, but then in the playoffs, they've absolutely looked apart. A big reason why though, their bullpen has been fantastic. That was kind of their Achilles heel all season long and especially late in the season. But for whatever reason, they've righted the ship. I think a big reason why Texas's bullpen has been so good has been a result of their starting pitching. Their starters, Montgomery and Avaldi, especially have been able to go deep into games. They've been able to get like 18 to 20 outs. That's huge. You've got to use your bullpen less. So Texas looks really good, but man, like betting against Houston in October, I don't know. Or sorry, betting, yeah, betting against the Astros in October, I don't know. To me, that's a risky bet. The games have been close. The Astros definitely had chances to win both of, or at least one of those games, but the Rangers were able to hold on. I think the longer this series goes, it favors the Astros. It's kind of like in Karate Kid, sweep the leg, Johnny. You know, like they're up 2-0 now. They've got to finish this because if this series gets back to Houston, I think the Astros are going to win in, in six or seven games. Like Texas needs to to finish this off. They look the part right now, but I don't want to bet against the Astros just yet. Okay, that's all fair, but the Rangers are seven and zero in the postseason. They are. And I feel yeah. like nobody cares. Like this, no one is really that's talking true. about this at all. I mean, it's all Phillies You're and all the right. dingers. It's like they haven't lost, and you said it. I mean, they're going to be hosting, you know, a game once again in their own park here in this series, but they've played once, once at home, obviously won, and everything else has been on the road. Like, that is remarkable. And here's a crazy little fact for you. If the Rangers, who I believe actually are going to beat the Astros here and go to the World Series, if they are to play the Phillies, the Rangers will have home field advantage. They both had 90 wins in the regular season, and the tiebreaker goes to, obviously, their matchup. The Rangers, like, swept the Phillies in a March series. Like, way back in March. So they would have home field advantage, which is also, like, sort of trippy here. Uh, Not that it matters because they went on the road, but that's a weird little fact, right? Well, here's another interesting fact, too. Um, uh, The Astros were 6-1 and in Texas this year, too. So the the Astros absolutely own the Rangers in their own building. But... uh, yeah, you know, we'll see. Uh, we're going to see what the Astros are made of. Their back has been against the wall before in the playoffs. They're, you know, I feel like they're used to this. They're battle tested. You know, this is this is kind of new territory for the Rangers. But uh, you're right, Skeets, the, the Rangers haven't gotten any credit at, at all. You're right. It, it kind of has gone under the radar, which I don't really understand. But yeah, it's just how it's gone. Yeah, and I go I go fair here that the Rangers are a World Series lock, but it's not like a master lock, right? It's like one of those crappy locks we had in high school, Joel. <laughs> like that, you know, you could basically just pull on it and it would come yeah. apart. They were like three ninety nine, and this is what we were using to like protect all of our books and our yeah. and our shorts that we had in our locker. So yeah, it's not the strongest lock in the world, but I think they're gonna get there. Uh, all right, okay. next one. Uh, last week. The Dodgers, they were embarrassed by a division rival. 
uh, in a shocking NLDS loss for the second straight postseason. This is the second time in a row it happened. So fair or foul, this one was the Dodgers' most disappointing postseason exit yet. Well, Tass always gives me a hard time for beating up, beating up on the Dodgers, <laughs> and I feel it's warranted most of the time. But I'm going to say foul for this one for, for a couple of reasons. Um, the, the biggest reason for me is going – like the Dodgers are always kind of a perennial threat. Like they're yeah. always they're always going to be there. Like, you know, if you had to be in the season, if you pick the Dodgers, you're like, eh, like that's not a bad pick. Um, but they lost several key players. They lost Cody Bellinger, Trey Turner, Justin Turner – those were three big pieces as well as the injuries they had to Walker Bueller, Tony Gonsolin and Gavin Lux. So they were missing a lot of key players, but even like in spite of that, they were still able to win the division, a division that myself and a lot of other people thought was going to be won by San Diego. They had great seasons, you know, with Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, and they kind of were able to steady the ship and they had a great season. Um, They did get embarrassed by Arizona, yes, but I think, like, if you kind of look at the Dodgers' recent playoff history, I think they've had more uh, worse playoff exits than this one. I just think the injuries and all the just kind of bad luck caught up to the Dodgers, caught up to the Dodgers in October. So I'm going to say foul, but it's still not a good look. It just kind of adds to the whole Dodgers' reputation of choking in October, but I think a healthy Dodgers team beats Arizona. I'm not going to play the what if game. I know I kind of just did, but (laughs) you know, I, yeah, I think a healthy LA team beats Arizona and beats them handily. Yeah. The reason why this one might be fair though, is they were 18 games better. The Dodgers were than the Diamondbacks Mm -hmm. in the regular season. They had dominated them the past few years as well in their matchups, but the Dodgers never led in the series at all that is a tough pill to swallow when you once again won another 100 games in fact i read that they're the second team in history to win 100 games during the regular season and never lead during an ensuing postseason series joining the 63 yankees so a team to win that many games in the regular season then never actually lead uh they only had two runs each game against arizona and just it is wild now in four of the past five years, right? They go out to the 2019 Nationals, the 21 Braves, the 22 Padres, and now the 23 D-backs. And uh, they were all upsets in in regards to the records because they were much better in the regular season than all of those teams that knocked them out. So they got one World mm-hmm. Series ring, right, in 2020. I feel, half a one. I'm going to say half yeah, a one. Yeah, you always point that out, don't you? I mean, man, I'm, I think Tass is right. You are always trying to bury them. But uh, do you think Dave Roberts is safe, in, like, as – as manager of that team because of that one ring or half ring, as you call it, uh, despite them coming up short time after time after time here. I I can't, I I can't justify him coming back. Uh, You know, they, I mean, I thought he would have been fired in the past year, the past two years, the past three years. You're like, Oh, this is it. This is it. Cause he's, I mean, Roberts has kind of made some decisions that he's, I feel like he's managed them out of the playoffs. I don't think this this playoff loss was on him. Mm. Arizona just straight up beat, you know, like they dominated the Dodgers. I'm not going to put that on Roberts, but you know, you, you need a scapegoat. I just, I, I don't see the justification in him coming back, but at the same time, I don't think he's the reason why they haven't won, you know, why they haven't been more successful, uh, in in recent years i just think they've just kind of failed uh to deliver they just like i said they're just i don't know what it is they're just cursed they just can't get over that hump yeah it got off to a rough start in this series or that last series against the d-backs when kershaw gave up what oh. five runs early in that game sort of set the tone for the rest of that series and them getting swept that was tough that was a rough start all right final one here in fair or foul uh six of the eight series up until this point have been sweeps there could be two more still in play here with obviously uh, the Phillies and the Rangers up 2-0. Uh, a lot of baseball still to go, but you never know. We have not had a single series stretched the distance. So fair or foul, the 2023 MLB postseason has been boring. Fair. Uh, pains me to say it, Skeets. Pains me to say it, wow. but fair. Uh, we uh, we put a, a post on this on no underscore bunts. Uh, Going to plug the IG. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Yeah. I mean, you, you just said it. I mean, six of the eight series have been sweeps 
and the other two went four games. We haven't seen any winner take all game. And of the 26 games played so far, 17 have been decided by three runs or fewer. And you're like, oh, well, that yeah. that should mean the games are close. They're exciting. But and maybe this is just more a subjective thing. The, even the games that have been within three runs don't feel close or exciting. Yeah. There's, I can't put my finger on it, but there's just something missing yeah. from, you know, October's past. I, I don't really know what it is. Now, that being said, um, Fox came out and said game one of Houston and Texas was the highest rated LCS game on TV since 2015. I mean, I'm assuming that's to do with the all Texas matchup, yeah. but Outside of game two in the Atlanta and Philadelphia series, which was awesome, Austin Riley hit that big home run. I can't really think of any like super exciting nail biting games, crazy games other than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no, it's oddly lacked some of the drama that we usually see in, uh, in October baseball. It's, it's true. I mean, a lot of these, a lot of these teams have like jumped on the other team. In the first inning, yeah. you know, a, a ton of times. I mean, we saw it again last night in that Phillies game two win. Um, and, and maybe a part of this too is all these, all the top teams in the regular season, you know, based on wins, they're all out of the playoffs. They went a combined yeah. one in 13, which is strange. So we have yeah. all these championship uh, series with teams that were, you know, 90 wins or less. And they're still good teams, obviously, but they're not like those juggernaut teams we saw in the regular season. Yeah, I think this one is fair. Um, and we and we hope they turn it around here, either in these series or at least in the World Series, because it would be weird if we get two more sweeps here, and then let's, yeah. and then whatever. Let's say the Phillies roll the Rangers. Let's say uh, in a World Series, it would be like we would go without a single single series that was sort of like close, which nobody wants. Yeah, yeah, and it's weird too because like usually in the playoffs, like in any sport, like fans love upsets. It's like oh my gosh, the one seat fell, the two seat fell. But this is kind of an outlier, an odd case where it's like too many upsets have almost hurt the on-field product because <laughs> like you said, the top teams, I think when, yeah, you said one in 13 yeah, and like you've got lower seated teams and there's already calls or people already questioning the playoff format, which I think is ridiculous. Like this is year two of this mm -hmm. and you can't claim you, you can't fault MLB. I mean, it's not MLB's fault that the top seeds lost and, and didn't perform. Um, but yeah, like there's just something missing, but we're, we still have, we still have the championship series, the league championship series and the world series. So hopefully it, it is more competitive, but yeah, like up to this point and it pains me so much to say it as a baseball fan, but it's just been lackluster yeah yeah hopefully uh these series sort of get a little closer here or at least a world series all right love the fair or foul good stuff there joel time for a new segment here on no bunts we're calling hit for the cycle hit it oh it's been hit i can vaguely hear it i definitely can't see it don't worry about it <laughs> okay uh <laughs> it, it went uh it went smooth in our pre-production meeting. Uh, it was a okay. great graphic. Uh, all right, so hit for the cycle. Uh, sort of some like, you know, zoom out type of questions when we're talking baseball. We got single, double, triple, home run. Obviously the cycle. Uh, quick trivia question. First Blue Jays to hit for the cycle. Blue Jays player to hit for the cycle, Joel. Who was it? <laughs> Come on. Rob Ducey? <laughs> <laughs> no, you dropped a Rob Ducey on that one. You got it wrong. <laughs> George Bell. No. I think this uh, – I, I, oh, I don't want to say – I think this guy – what's going on? <laughs> I think this guy may have been canceled. Uh, Gruber. Kelly Gruber. Kelly Gruber. Oh, Kel Kelly, Gruber. Kelly Gruber. Kelly Gruber. Yes, Kelly Gruber. Uh, yeah, he okay. was canceled. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, what do you like most about baseball? Joel. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to kind of give – uh, a, a different answer on this one. What I feel it is a different answer. Um, the thing I like most about baseball, and I'm comparing this to the other sports, is I love the parity of baseball. I love how it's even uh, between all 30 teams, and it has been for quite some time. If you look at teams that have, like, uh, you know, in all four, four, you know, the four major sports in yep. North America, um, in baseball, only six teams haven't won a World Series. When you compare that to the NBA, 
and uh, 11 teams have not won the championship. NHL, 11 teams haven't won the championship. NFL, 12 teams haven't won the championship. So I love the parody in baseball. I feel the gatekeepers have done a great job in maintaining that. Some people might disagree. Uh, there kind of was an era, I feel like, in the early 2000s where it was just Boston, New York, Boston, New York, and, you know, oh, they're just buying it. They're just buying a team. But, you know, through the CBA and, you know, team Moneyball and other things like that, small market teams have been able to uh, exploit certain loopholes and have been able to be competitive. And this is a perfect example. Uh, this year, there's six new teams in the playoffs that weren't in the playoffs last year. Hmm. So I love the parody. It's always great to see new blood. Uh, there's always competitive new teams. And I know a salary cap has pros and cons, and I'm not going to have that debate right now. But baseball has kind of figured out a way to not have a salary cap, but still maintain a competitive balance. And the way they've kind of done it, I feel they've actually made it more competitive than the other sports. And what I like about that is that, listen, if you're close and you want to open up your checkbook and you want to go out and sign that player and it's going to put you over the tax, you're able to do that. But in the other three sports, it's like, you're like, oh man, like how can we, how can we maintain this competitive team and yeah. like be under the cap and we got to get rid yeah. of, yeah, and get penalized. Like, I, I don't like that. You know, like when you're so close and then you got to let guys go. So I like the competitive parity in, in baseball. I think that's good for the sport. I think it keeps fans of all fan bases engaged. And, you know, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Skeets. It's just unpredictable. Like you never kind of know what you're going to see year to year. Whereas I feel like in the other sports at the beginning of the year, like if I gave you a chance to pick four teams to win a championship, one of those four teams is most likely going to hit. Whereas in baseball, like who knows? I mean, no one had Arizona and Texas in the league championship right. series this year. Like absolutely no one. And and here we are. So yeah, love the competitive parody. That's the thing I like most about baseball. Good, good answer there. Uh, JD, feel free to jump in as well. Uh, I'll just go quickly. One of my favorite things, it's always stuck with me. My grandpa told me this when I was like really, really young is uh, the best thing about a baseball game is that you can see something in every game that's never happened before. And Absolutely. I have no idea if it's actually true, but it sounds good. I, I think there is some truth to it, uh, and, and I do love that. And uh, and we talked about it already a couple of weeks ago. I also love. I mean, now now we just went over how the postseason's been a little lackluster, but when we get into these high pressure moments, uh, it's a great game even for TV. Just that that building between every pitch, uh, it's it's cinematic, uh, uh, which is fantastic. Mm. Uh, so I love that, especially the postseason. JD, anything to add? It's almost better on TV when it gets to that point, I find. Yeah. I like seeing the strike zone. I like seeing, you know, the knowing what's in and out, which I can't tell when I'm in the nosebleed yeah. somewhere. Drinking in the sun. That's been my favorite thing about baseball. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple of beers, a couple of pops sitting there in the sun, enjoying the game. That's, that's, a, that's a great point. Like, we're all, like, locked in right now on the uh, fall baseball. But yeah. summer baseball, when yeah. you're just kicking it. You, you know, maybe there's a couple seats open around you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're catching up with a friend. You're sort of watching the game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're sort of not. That's, that is a, that's a great time at the game. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, hit the double here. What do you least like about baseball, Joel? Without a doubt, this was an easy one to answer. The over-reliance on analytics. It, it is just really hurting the, the, the on-field product. And you're seeing that in the playoffs where managers are getting, you know, we talked about Dave Roberts. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a perfect example. Um, they just get too cute with the analytics. And I, I don't like that. Analytics, and I've said this time and time again, analytics should be a tool uh and i'm all in favor of using analytics like there's clearly lots and lots of benefits to using them whether it's roster construction matchups things like that but they it shouldn't be the end all and be all it should be a tool to help you make a decision they shouldn't be making the decision for you and it's and even like you know like f friends that i know that are big like numbers guys too even they're saying now they're like oh man like this is a bit too much. Right. And, you know, I hate to talk about the Blue Jays again, but I mean, in that they took out Barrios in the playoff game, absolutely dealing, absolutely dealing. And they took him out. And there was that sad picture of him in the dugout, 
you know, like almost crying watching his ex team celebrate. That's one of many examples. The Rays pulled Blake Snell in uh, the 2020 World Series again, absolutely dealing, but the numbers said he's got to come out. It's it's just not it's not good for the game. It's not good for the product. Like fans don't like it. I get its place, but there's just it's just become too much a, a part of the game, and I, I don't like it. Yeah, it's maybe yeah, it's it's maybe veered too much in one direction with some of these managers and organizations, how, how much they sort of lean on it. Cause you're right. We've talked about it. That to me as a casual baseball fan, you're like, this guy's cooking. Like I get it. Yeah. I know your numbers say, okay, they've seen him a couple times, whatever pitches on the arm. I, everybody understands it, but it's also sports. It's like, yeah, but he's got their number tonight. Like he's locked exactly. in man. like, so, uh, I mean, I, I don't envy their position. Uh, because you're damned if you do, damned if you don't at times, right? You you leave him in there and you say, oh, he had it going, and then he gives up a home run, and everybody goes, you idiot, he had already pitched uh, <laughs> right. 80 pitches. What are you doing? So yeah. that's that's tough, but uh, I think there's some truth to what you're saying, Joel. Uh, my uh, answer to this, uh, very strange. Uh, why are these guys forced to wear hats? <laughs> I don't think you should have to wear a hat, okay? <laughs> I don't want to wear a hat. Yeah, uh, okay. but these guys, these baseball players, they have to wear hats. That's I, true. I, right? I mean, is that true, Joel? It's mandatory. It's part of the uniform code. Yeah, I think like it's yeah. part. You have to be like, in I can't go out. To, uniform, I can't yeah. go out to center field and not wear a hat. <laughs> I oh. I believe so. <laughs> that's, I believe that's, that's so true. weird when you think about it. Well, if you're in the hot sun here in Atlanta. You're gonna I'm want saying to... go ahead and wear a hat, but yeah. if I don't want to wear a hat, yeah. I shouldn't be forced to wear a hat. I just find it odd. Just, uh, just <laughs> stepping on your style. Yeah. You want to show off? You, oh you're... yeah, these guys could even show off their personality a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like they can't wear yeah. their they can't wear their hat backwards even out there. You don't see any Keep man that sun buns. Off my neck. Yeah, there's no yeah. man buns uh, in baseball. <laughs> they got hats on. What about you, uh, JD? Uh, I'm, I'm with Joel. Uh, just chiming in on the stats thing. I think the the main. The main thing that we're talking about is risk. They're unwilling to take risks, which makes mm, the game yes. less exciting. Less fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what also, I, they're trying to mitigate it this year, and this is my answer, is that the, the, the games in the season, really it's the season, because they've kind of solved the games being too long, but this season is so goddamn long. I mean, I said it started I mean, in March. It started March. in March, late March. And here we are yeah. you know, getting close to late October. Yeah. It's a long, long season. But you're right. I mean, the game improvements the ga- uh, are yeah. amazing. I, both on television and at the at the game, the end game experience. Yeah. Granted, I went to one game this year. But I stayed till the end, which I never do. It, I have talked to many casual baseball fans, and everybody's like, this is it's better. Yeah. It's just you it's it's much more the pace is better. You're into it more. Yeah. It's just not so dragged out. Yeah. Uh with you know, games were going four or five hours. Like you just can't I mean, we have the attention span <laughs> of a fly now. We, like everybody, you can't have games that yeah. long. So they've done a great job. Yeah. Uh all right, next one here. What is uh one thing you would alter or change about baseball, Joel? So for me, and I think a lot of fans share this sentiment is, and I don't know how you solve this because it's very complex. There's a lot of money involved, but you have to get rid of local blackouts on, on streaming services and apps. I mean, you're actively suppressing the product from fans yeah. who want to see it. And the majority of fans and like my friends who watch baseball, they get MLB TV. They want to, a, lot, a lot of them have cut the cords and that's where the trend is going. A lot of them just want to get it to follow their local team, but because of their ISP, their local games are blacked out. So they're forced to watch it on cable, but they don't have cable because they've cut the cord. So they're going to illegal streaming sites and things like that. Yeah. They need to get this sorted out. The TV deals are just so disjointed between regional sports networks and like Apple TV. And I think there's games on YouTube and then you need subscriptions to these. It, like it's just all over the place. Now to Rob Manfred's credit, he has said like, they they know that they need to address this. They're trying to address this, but it's very complex because you've got so much money like with the networks and things like that. So I don't really know how you solve this problem, but I can't watch like the MLB games. The, the playoff games are blacked out here in Taiwan. Huh. I, I have to use, I have to use a streaming site to, to watch them, which is, you know, like fine, but 
it's an extra annoying step that yeah. I feel I shouldn't have to do. So yeah, get the streaming thing sorted out. I don't know if the NBA has a, a similar issue with streaming, but yeah, local fans should be able to be able to watch MLB TV and and not have it be blacked out. It to me like it's ridiculous. I get why it is, yeah, but it's just annoying from a fan standpoint. Yeah, there, so fix there, the blackouts. There are the same complications with the NBA League Pass for sure. Uh, okay. You're you're right. Any of these sports, if you buy the equivalent of League Pass or whatever these leagues call it, you're proving that I am a fan of the sport. Therefore, I will <laughs> yes. pay this amount of money. Therefore, give me the games, all of them. It's so so stupid. Uh, in the NBA, it might only get worse here they got a new tv deal coming up there's going to be you know apple's probably going to be in play amazon's going to be in play i mean these games are going to be scattered all over the place and i think if they do that fine but then give a fan the ability that wants to pay whatever 150 a year whatever it is to actually watch all the games in one place and i'm with you same thing for baseball here you want to grow the sport jesus let them watch it totally or and if you want if you must black them out because you want to the fan to come if you're a League Pass subscriber, give them like a massive discount on tickets. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm a fan. I'm paying. You're getting a cut of this League Pass that I'm paying. So let you, give me seventy five percent off my tickets, and then I'll come down to the the arena. Yeah, but these yeah. are these are blacked out because you know ABC or ESPN oh, yeah, yeah, has yeah. paid big dollars yeah. for these particular games, and they're saying no, don't watch it on League right. Pass. You got to watch it where we have it because we paid a lot of money for that and yeah. we got to sell ads on it and it's just like you know it's a it, it's not it's not a great fan experience is what we're getting at here mm-hmm. which i mean they put the fans like fourth fifth or sixth here in, in the position in the batting order if you will um anything else you would change jd or alter about baseball i i like both of your answers um i think i said it before shorter season short yeah you know how do you feel about that joel as, as like a more of a diehard baseball fan, because I mean that's what the, if you talk to any casual baseball fan, it's basically one of the first things they say. Season's too long, 162 games. Are you kidding me? But what do you think about that? I I mean I'm just used to it being 162. So like if you shorten it by like 20 games or by 30 games, like what like what does it solve? I don't think it makes things better. I don't think it. I don't I don't think it makes things better or worse. I just like, I'm used to it being 162 games. Like it's that's, I feel what another, it's another point of differentiation from the other sports, like NBA and NHL's 82 games yeah. football, I think now is 17 games and, and baseball's marathon, you know, baseball's yeah. a marathon. It's, it's designed. So I like, yeah, as a, as a, as a hardcore fan, me and JD, obviously we're a bit different, but I, I like 162 games and even in the 162 game season, it still comes down to the wire that last week of September, you've got playoff races and divisional races. So yeah, it is exciting, but it is long. And you know, I, I don't really start seriously paying attention. I mean, it's different, like working for no bunts now, but yeah. like as a, even like as a hardcore fan, I don't really start taking teams or things seriously until like June, July, you know, because then you kind of know who the contenders and uh, and the pretenders are at that point. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like late June, I I don't care unless the Jays are in their red uniforms on Canada Day. <laughs> Other than that, like who gives a shit? You yeah, know? like I mean yeah. the same thing goes on in the NBA where casuals totally. say I don't care until Christmas. You know, yeah. even though the season starts, you know, here yeah. very very soon. But look at the week. NFL. Everybody lives and dies on every yes. single game. Yes, every single game. Yeah. and it and the entire week revolves. If you're a football fan, your entire week revolves around it yeah. during the season. It's very intense. And it's the most popular sport in the yeah. in, in this country. So yeah. you know, for sure, there's something there. But they just keep adding games too because they're like, oh, more money, more money. More <laughs> yeah, money. fair enough. But yeah, 17 still... games is a lot different than 82. Is a lot different than 162. 162 for sure. All right, final one here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going yard home run. What's the best thing baseball has done in the past five years, Joel? The best thing baseball has done in the last five years is finally. Uh, embracing and allowing players to show emotion. Mm. This has been long overdue. You know, baseball is a, has been a sport of tradition and unwritten rules and adhering to those unwritten rules. But, you know, in recent years, you're seeing players kind of, I don't want to say not follow that anymore, but kind of blaze their own path and, you know, you know, pound their chest, flip bats, home run celebrations in the dugout, 
walk off home run choreographed celebrations, whatever. It just humanizes them. And I think that really resonates and connects with fans. Uh, I, I think fans love to see that they've clearly gone younger as a result and they've been able to attract younger fans. It just adds so much more to the product on TV or like when you're watching the game live, whatever. I just love seeing that emotion. And that has been absent in the game for so long. Even when players hit big home runs like 10, 15 years ago, even if it was a walk-off or whatever, you know, they're just kind of like, Woo, we did it. But now it's just so much more emotional, so much more engaging. I love to see that. And then, you know, for the godfathers or the old people who don't like it, I mean, you know, deal with it because this is what it is. The fans love it. We love to see it. And it's absolutely normal. I mean, you go up and you hit a huge home run. You're human. Of course, you're going to show emotion. Yeah. Like, how could you not? You shouldn't be expected to suppress that. I mean, I think my favorite moment was actually last year in the Phillies. I think it was Reese Hoskins. And he just, instead of a bat flip, he just spiked his yeah. bat yeah. right into the <laughs> ground. And people went bananas for it i loved it so i love how baseball has kind of embraced the personalities embraced the emotions uh, of the players it's just made it's just added another exciting element to what i feel is just an ever-improving product at this point yeah i mean uh my, my godson plays baseball here in atlanta and you go and watch these games and all these kids are you know dressing or trying to replicate all their uh, favorite baseball players with the chains and their shades that That's they awesome. wear and their style. And it's like, yeah, they're, they are leaning into more of the, that sort of uh, that NBA angle where it's like, sell these, sell these guys, they're the superheroes yeah. and their personalities and stuff like that. So that is a good thing where you're right. 10 years ago, even what I mean, five years ago, even like, it was all like, hey, stop that. Don't do that. And there was this debate about, like, what are we doing here? Like, we're losing fans left and right here, uh, especially yeah. young fans. Um, so maybe we should lean into that and let these guys have some fun. Dare they have fun playing baseball? <laughs> it's like, yeah, what a wild concept. Uh, my answer to this, we already talked about it a lot, but the, the, these changes to the game are fantastic. Yeah. It's it's it, it's amazing that it, it took this long for the pitch clock. Now, now some of the other ones, like I'm not so sure with these guys wearing oven mitts to steal bases and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> part of me, maybe I w I'm a little old school. It's like, hey man, you're sliding in there. Maybe yeah. you're gonna break a finger, but that's the risk you're taking. But uh, we want to protect the players. I get that. But the bigger bases and stuff like that. I mean, I do wonder if it's gonna get too easy for these guys on the base paths to to steal because the the pitcher's got the pitch clock. They got they can't throw over there all the time and keep them close to the bag. They have the giant mitts, bigger bags. I wonder <laughs> if it goes too far, but I'm, I know I like these guys, uh, as I've said before, too. Like, I like the speed on the base pass, and there's more stealing. So that's exciting. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, all the, all the mm -hmm. rule changes. JD? Yeah, same. And I, I, love, the, I love seeing the specific uh, pitches on, in real time on this, the Jumbotron. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a five, four finger knuckle ball or <laughs> fastball or whatever. Like I didn't ever know the difference right. of that and just the way that they can measure that stuff. Uh, but the best thing in the yeah. last five years in baseball is uh, no buns. Oh, yes. I'm a, I'm a company Great man. Answer. Great answer. I was, Great answer. I was wondering who was going to say it. So uh, JD, the man that produces it, comes through. All right. That is uh, our new segment, which I uh, promise you does have a, a cool graphic It does. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, Do you want to just hit it now? Uh, no, no, because I'm afraid it won't work. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, let's wrap up no buns here with some trivia. Joel, you've got some questions for JD and I, and I guess there's, what, is there a movie or a pop culture uh, twist to these? Oh, well, hopefully. I said pop culture yeah. in the, when I was when I was talking with you offline, but then I was like, they're actually all about movies and TV. So okay. anyway, okay. Um, yeah, so five, yeah, five trivia questions, yeah, about movies, uh, TV, and obviously baseball related. Okay. So first question, okay. One of the following players did not host Saturday Night Live. Okay. Which one was it? Mark McGuire, Deion Sanders, or Derek Jeter? So which one of these three players did not host Saturday Night Live? Mark McGuire, Deion Sanders, or Derek Jeter? Okay, I think we can remove Deion Sanders from the equation. Here's why. I was just watching SNL. Um, they had somebody who, um, somebody was doing a Deion Sanders impersonation Okay. Because of him being the coach, obviously, for Colorado. Right. And they showed a clip of him on SNL. 
like dancing, like real Dion. Okay, right, right, so right. So he had to so have been there. Yeah. And then I feel like Derek Jeter. It's in, it's in New York. He's so New Did York. Did he host? He screams though? New York. Mark McGuire Mark, would be horrible, wouldn't he, he? He would be horrible. And wasn't he like a doping guy, like back in the day? Yeah, like, but he was also like you know socking dinger. No, I know, right? but nobody cared. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna guess Mark McGuire. I'm gonna I'm going McGuire as well. I guess but I feel like it's a trick question I know. because Jeter just screams New York. I know. It's okay. We're gonna go Mark McGuire. We already regret it. Is that the answer? <laughs> you are correct. Hey, hey, you are correct. All right. Yeah. All right. Derek Jeter hosted on December first, two thousand and one, and Deion Sanders hosted February. 19th, 1995. All right. There you go. Okay, yes. Uh, made a talk of that. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right, 1-0. Oh. Okay, second question. I'm going to read the IMDb description of a baseball movie. You tell me what movie this is. Oh. It's a one-sentence description from IMDb. Okay. okay. Lindsay is stuck in the middle of her relationship with Ben and his passion for the Boston Red Sox. Oh, uh, uh, pitch per... No, oh. no, uh, Fever Pitch. Hold on, hold no, on. Wait, hold wait, on. Wait, now, wait, who's that? in this movie? Drew Barrymore? It's, is that the And m- Jimmy Fallon? That sounds right. Uh, uh, what did you say the first time? I thought that was right. Uh, oh, no, not Pitch Perfect. No, it's, no, but it's like Fever Pitch. Oh, or, man. Uh, uh, it's a baseball pun for sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's actually a remake for from a soccer movie. Oh, um, really? Which I think was called like Pitch as well. Like there was Pitch in it. You want to go Fever Pitch? I don't feel that comfortable. I don't feel great about it, but all right, we're going. Fever I don't have pitch. anything. We're else. going fever pitch. JD, you should feel great about uh, it because that's yeah. the answer. Wow! Fever pitch. <laughs> wow! We are really talking this out. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. I gotta make this harder. <laughs> make this. You guys got fever pitch. <laughs> two wow. for two okay. in the play. It, it, right. it is, is it Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon? Is that right? It's Drew Barrymore, yeah, and, and Jimmy Fallon. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen it. No, I, I've never actually either. seen it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, question number three. Okay, <laughs> three baseball movies have been nominated for Best Picture. Nominated, nominated for Best Picture. Right. Okay. Name them. Okay, well, Field let's, of Dreams. Field of Dreams, I think. Yeah. Bull Durham. Yes. Both Costner, right? Uh. Yeah. Is that right? I think so. Um, and then what's the third? <sighs> the Natural. Could you... Oh, that's great a great pull. movie. It's a great movie. Robert Redford, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. We're gonna go with those three. We're not overthinking it. We're on fire. So, Field of Dreams. Um, what was the second one we said? Uh, Bull Durham, Durham. and then uh, the Natural. Hold on. Oh, you thought of another one? No, but Bull Durham, I'm, I'm second guessing. Oh, why? I don't know. Go with that instinct, JD. Go with that instinct. (laughs) I'll give you a clue. It's not Bull Durham. Oh wow, well it's not. Okay. um, Okay. What other? Okay, what else is there? Major League was never no nominated for an Academy <laughs> no, Award. Yeah, they I don't overlooked think. it. They overlooked it. It was robbed. Yeah. It was robbed, but I digress. Uh, oh, oh, uh, what about a League of Their Own? Ooh. Is that, would that be nominated for? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I let's think go. So. That's an also great, great movie. It's a great movie. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Okay. Let's slip it in there. I like it. Yeah. Let's do it. Are you guys locking this in? Yeah. We're locking we're, it in. Yeah, we're locking in um, a Field of Dreams, A League of Their Own, and The Natural. The natural. I don't feel great about that last one. Okay, but yeah, those are our three. No, you got one of the three. Uh, give, give us the one we got. Field of Dreams. Okay. Uh, okay. Moneyball. Oh, oh come on. Should have got that. And the other one going way back, but uh, Pride of the Yankees. Yeah. Oh, okay, I would have never gotten that. Never yeah. Seen it. Eight, oh, eight, this in my research. So these three movies were nominated for Best Picture, but eight baseball movies overall have had Academy Award nominations. And I believe Bull Durham had an Academy Award nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay. Don't okay. quote me on that, okay. but Bull Durham was in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Question four, mixing it up here, doing a little something different. <laughs> I'm going to give you three clues, just very simple clues. I want you to tell me what baseball movie it is. Okay. First clue. A new kid moves to town. Sandlot. The Los Angeles Dodgers pretending to sneak a kiss with the lifeguard. It's it's the Sandlot. Is that the name of it? I mean, that's a movie, yeah. It's the kids. Yeah. Is is that it? Yeah. JD, I can't get anything by you. There you go. I can't you get go. anything by you. You're like Patrick Waugh in 88. <laughs> Patrick Waugh. 
Thank you. Okay. First name to come to mind. I'm not a hockey guy. Okay, Jenny, you're killing this. New kid moves to town. You got it right away. Yeah. Sandlot right away. I, I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. like rookie, uh, rookie of the year. I was like, did he move in that movie? But yeah, no. Yeah. Is that what it was called? I don't know. What, what's the movie I'm thinking about? Yeah, Rookie of the rookie Year. Of the year. With, okay. uh, Henry Cubs. Rowan Gardner. Yeah, that's right. Mm. That's right. And uh, John Candy, greatest Canadian. Greatest Canadian, John Candy. <laughs> well, rest in peace. Okay. All right. This one. I uh, I want to stump you guys on one of them. <laughs> okay. In the show Better Call Saul, Kim Wexler can be seen wearing a t-shirt of an MLB team. Oh. Name that team. Oh, my God. I think Joel shared this on his Instagram account. Sure did. You did, didn't you? And you liked it too, Skeets. Yeah. Okay. So, so, it's, uh, so it takes place in New in Me- Albuquerque, in New Mexico. Albuquerque, yeah. Which New Mexico does not have no. a team. Where was Kim Wexler from? Holy moly. I'm trying to picture it. I'm. My mind is going to Padres. Okay. I'm trying to read Joel's face there. I got nothing. <laughs> Ah <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I have. I literally I have. have no I, I uh, literally can. I can see the Joel Instagram, but I can't see what logos on that shirt. We're going Padres. We don't feel great yeah. about it. You may have got us here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you because you guys are. Kim Wexler was from Omaha, Nebraska. Geographically, this team is closish. Closish. <laughs> can I pull up a map? of america Maha, nebraska so what's in the middle there yeah. we got uh <laughs> is minnesota close oh to that? oh i know what it is i think i know what it go is go on is it the kansas city royals oh winner winner yes. Yes. chicken dinner jane Skeets. <laughs> yeah i need, needed that geographical great uh, pull great pull. Uh, had you guys you guys did so good i had to give you a clue on the last one that was tough that was obscure yeah and uh, Kim Wexler is a real one. Uh, she's a real one. <laughs> she one of really my favorite is. TV characters. That final scene where she's uh, hold oh, on, I haven't seen the end of it. Shut up. Holy, okay, holy. final scene. Jesus. Final scene. Murphy, anyway, man. Jesus. All right. Um, yeah, Kansas City Royals. Good stuff. Great, Great trivia questions. I uh, I love that. Uh, I don't know how much work that took you, but hey, don't be afraid to do that again. I like that. Yeah. Uh, for next All week right. on love No Bunch, we're here. gonna be a day earlier next week. I believe we're going live on Tuesday. That is around the same time, 815 Eastern. So make sure you subscribe to the athletic baseball show feed. Get yourself a subscription to the athletic, go to the athletic.com slash no dunks. If you're an NBA fan, jump over to no dunks live at 10 AM Eastern here on Wednesday. We're going to be doing our NBA awards predictions. Myself, TK, JD. We've got our season previews all week long. The season starts next week, but yeah, hit the smash smash. the like button. I should say, at the Athletic Baseball Show. Leave your boys a five-star rating and review. Go watch a scary movie for Joel. <laughs> Freak yourself out. Uh, you dressing up as anything for Halloween, Joel? Uh, TBD. TBD, Skeets. <laughs> TBD. I'm not a costume guy. I'm not creative. You're the costume guy. You should give me an idea. You got great costumes. You love costumes. You're always sharing that guy on Instagram that does those amazing cosplays, like cheap cosplays. Oh, low-cost cosplay. Yeah. Dude's a legend. That yeah, guy's... I can't I can't touch him. <laughs> that guy's very, on another level. Very funny. Uh, all right, we'll call it there, guys. For Joel, JD, myself, enjoy the rest of the championship series. We'll see you here next week on Tuesday for No Bunts. Embrace the day, people. <laughs>